So, the last lecture we have discussed the cuts related to the real numbers and in fact, we have also given the idea of the date kinds theorem and that theorem says if you remember that if a date kinds if you just go through the uh, recapitulate our thing, what is the date kinds theorem is that if the system of real number is given then we can all divide this system into the two classes lower class and the upper class such that each class will contain at least one number. And second part is every number belonging to one class or the other. So, these classes will be non empty and the real number will belongs to either one class or the other class. And third point is the every member every number in the lower class is less than the every member of the upper class. Then this cut this section we denoted by alpha and we say alpha represents the real number. The alpha may or may not belongs to the if it a rational number it will belongs to one of the class either L or R and if it is a irrational number then it may not be belongs to the it will not belongs to uh, the class L or R. Okay. This can also be justified this theorem results can also be justified as follows. Suppose, we have the uh, cut alpha is a real number which bifurcate the entire all the real numbers into two classes lower class and the upper class. Okay. Now, in this case suppose we construct the L dash and R dash as the set of rational numbers set of all rational numbers rationals set of all rationals which is in the class L formed to L and set of all rational which are in the upper class R rational in L set of all rational in the upper class R and let us denote this value by R. Okay. So, they will form the two classes every relation number will be in one of the class either L dash or R dash and number will be. Now, there are three possibility one is the case one if this because L dash and R dash these are collection of the rational point. So, L dash may have the get s number and uh, uh, get a number R dash may not have a any list number second case when L dash has does not have a greatest number R dash has a least number and third case when none of them is having. Okay. So, first case if the class L dash the class L dash has a greatest number greatest number say L number L and the class R dash R dash has no least number. No least number. Okay. Then every real number A, then every real number A, which is less than alpha L, which is less than L, it is real number less than L. less than L belongs to the class L. Belongs to the class. Why? Because this L, L dash has a greatest number L. So, any rational number which are less than L must be the point in this and between any two rational number there are the further rational number. Similarly, between two real numbers, we will show that it, there are infinite number of real numbers. So, if any number A, any real number A, whether it is rational or irrational, if it is less than L, it means it must be the class in L dash, if it is rational, is it not? Otherwise, it will be the class in L, because L is the uh, lower class con contains all the rational and irrational numbers. So, basically, any number A which is less than L must be the point in L. Okay. So, that is one, one point and similarly any every real number B similarly 
every real number v every number v greater than l greater than l every number v greater than l belongs to class r again the same thing okay any number b real number if it is a rational point then it will because it is greater than l it must be in r days so obviously it will be in r so if it is a not rational then we can choose all the points because it is the lowest scalar we all the number which are greater than will be come over here okay so that will be fine in the in this class and every real number we get than this but this is evident v is a rational okay so thus l is a number alpha for this so what is so here so l correspond to our alpha is it not in this case the alpha real number basically is nothing but l clear similarly in the second case if the class l des has no greatest number but r des has least number say small all then the same repetition case will be there and here in the same case same thing, alpha becomes r in the third case in the third case the class l des class l des has no greatest number has no greatest number and the class r des r des has no least number then basically this section will define a rational point then the section is it okay hmm. then the section the section l des r des this defines an irrational number beta beta okay hmm. now our aim is that this all the real number will be either in l or in r so all the rational number all the rational which are less than beta all the rational number less than less than beta belongs to l belongs to l and or and every rational number greater than beta greater than beta belongs to r why why it's so because this is our beta here this l this is r i am choosing l des and r des l des and r des and beta i am taking such a thing where l des is neither having the greatest uh, number uh, r des does not have the least number so it will rep the section represented by beta now we claim this beta is a basically the number real number corresponding to our cut lr then if we choose any number less than beta then that number if it is rational it will be the point in l des so it will be the point in l so all the rational which are less than beta must be the in l suppose i take a irrational point then what happens the point which are say any point beta days which is less than beta in between beta and beta days there are infinitely many irrational points so those points are in the l days hence it is in l so beta days has to be in l 
So, therefore, all such uh, number rational number greater than less than beta must be in L or rational number which are greater than beta must be in this. Okay. So, this is one can. Similarly, we can prove for the irrational case. Similarly, if, uh, if every rational number every irrational number sorry irrational number beta days less than less than beta belongs to less than beta belongs to L Mm. While, while the irrational number greater than beta will belongs to R, and the reason is I have just justified the reason because there are rational number in between beta dash and beta which are in L dash, so it is in L. Therefore, this way similarly other. So, this way we can say that any if we take a aggregate of the real number or set of all real numbers, we can always divide into two classes where both the class will be non empty and elements uh, either lower class will have the largest element, upper class will not have a large, uh, least element, and vice versa and every element of the lower class is less than the every mem member of this and the alpha correspond to this section. So, if it is rational it will belongs to one of the class, if it is irrational then it will not belongs to any of the class. So, this is the way the date kinds had introduced the concept. Okay. Here in this process we have though we have not justified, but what we have assumed it between any two real number there are infinite number of reals also. Is it not? That is the way justify. Between any two rational number, we can justify it as a rational number. What about the irrational number? If there are two irrational number, can you say again there are the infinite number of the rational and irrational number in between it? The justification is follow. So we can go through the some properties. The properties of real number. The first property is between any two between any two real numbers between any two real numbers there are an infinite infinite number of rational numbers between any two real number there are an infinite number of number of rational numbers let us see how suppose we have the two numbers one is alpha 1 another one is alpha 2. So, let alpha 1 and alpha 2 be any two real number real number such that alpha 1 is less than alpha 2. So, alpha 1 will correspond to the section L 1 R 1. Okay. So, alpha 1 will correspond to. So, alpha 1 will correspond to the section L 1 R 1, alpha 2 will correspond to the section L 2 R 2, is it not clear. Now, the position is like this is alpha 1, here is alpha 2, this correspond to section L 1 R 1 this correspond to section L 2 R 2. So, every element of L 1 is basically element of L 2, every number which belongs to L 1 is uh, also the L, um, in L 2, 
is not because alpha 1 is less than alpha 2, but all the numbers of R 1 is not in R 2. It means, some of the elements of R 1 must be in L 2 is it not. So, because of this, so we can say that every member uh, since alpha 1 is less than alpha 2. So, this implies that every member of L 1 every member of L 1 belongs to L 2 every member of L 1 belongs to a, but every member of R 1 R 1 does not belong does not belong to R 2 because these are the points which are left out is it not these are the points which does not belongs to R 2 then ok, but they are in R L 2, but they are in L 2 which belongs with the so these members. So, these members these members of R 1 belong to L 2 is it ok. So, now if we pick up any two elements from L 1 and L 2 ok. So, so, let a 1 belongs to L 1 and a 2 is in R 1, but not in L 1 not in L 1. It means I am taking here somewhere is it not this point this point it is in uh, here this is the point a 2 oh sorry uh, yes this is the point a 2 which is in which is clearly a 2 is in L 2 or a 2 belongs to L 2 such that let us just take this a 1 is in alpha 1 the here is a 1 a 2 I am taking in L 2 which is in R 1, but not in R 2. So, those point. So, a 2 minus a 1 or uh, so clearly a 1 is less than a 2 ok. This a 1 is less than a 2, but what is the a 1? Mm, a 1 and a 2 are the point in the same class and class L L 2 all the element which are less than alpha 2 must be the point in L 2 and there are infinitely many point if I choose between a 1 and a 2 there are many points we can which we can introduce in between a 1 and a 2 which are in less than alpha 2. So, it is again in this ok. So, what we can between a 1 and a 2 if a 1 and a 2 are rationals are rational then we can introduce many infinite number of so infinite rational point rational points can be introduced in between a 1 and a 2 which lies in which lie in L 2 is it ok or not which lie in L 2. Huh? Yes, yeah, like this way. So, we are in fine. It means between any two real number, but a 1 a 2 is satisfying this criteria alpha 1 less than alpha this alpha 1 is less than a 1. No, sorry, I am sorry. Yes, yes, uh, no, no, a 1 a 1 is less than alpha 1, a 1 is less than alpha 1. So, it is alpha 1 a 1 less than alpha 1 a 2 less than alpha 2 ok. Now, if we take a 1 here say here I take a 1 days then similarly if I take alpha 1 less than a 1 days which is less than a 2 which is less than alpha 2. So, in between alpha 1 alpha 2 there are infinitely many rational number can be introduced and that is what he says 
that between any two real numbers there are infinite number of rational points. Okay. So, again I believe what I did suppose you choose the two real number alpha 1 alpha 2 then ordering relation is post, can be defined. So, alpha 1 is suppose less than alpha 2 it means you are having a cut of this type. Okay. This is alpha 1 here is alpha 2 what we want in between alpha 1 alpha 2 there are infinite number of rational numbers. Okay. So, what I am taking is I am picking up two rational number one is a 1 dash another one a 2 a 1 dash is a point in r 1, but not in l 1 a 2 dash is a point in l 2. So, obviously, a 1 dash and a 2 we can again order them let a 1 dash is less than a 2 a 1 dash and a 2 are rational number. So, in between these two rational number we can introduce infinite number of rational point again therefore, in between alpha 1 and alpha 2 we can introduce infinite number of rational points that is what it says. Okay. So, this is second case is second property is between any two real number between any two real numbers there are there are an infinite there are an infinite number of irrational numbers Okay. Now, proof is suppose let alpha 1 and alpha 2 be any two real number. Real numbers such that alpha 1 is less than alpha 2. Now, in the previous uh, property between any two real number we can introduce rational points. So, let a 1 and a 2 with the two rational number two rational numbers lying between alpha 1 and alpha 2 such that alpha 1 is less than a 1 is less than a 2 less than alpha 3 alpha 2 sorry less than alpha 2 okay because alpha 1 alpha 2 real so in between we can introduce the rational now what we want to show that in between these rational number are there so let beta be a rational number let beta be a rational number let beta be a rational number rational irrational sorry irrational number beta be a irrational number lying uh, let beta be a rational if it lies in between if it lies in between a 1 and a 2 then our problem is solved then obviously it will lie between it will lie in between alpha 1 and alpha 2. Okay. Suppose it is not us. suppose beta does not lie or you can write there exists a rational number beta uh, suppose beta does not lie in between a 1 and a 2 suppose beta does not lie in between then we can choose a 1 and a 2 then find the two rational number b 1 and b 2 such that beta lies between b 1 and b 2 and b 1 
minus b 2 or b 2 minus b 1 is less than a 2 minus a 1. Let us see how it um, what we did suppose we have this alpha 1 here we have alpha 2 in between alpha 1 alpha 2 I have taken the point a 1 and here is say b a 2. Okay? There are infinite many points alpha 1 a 1 a 2. Now, in between a 1 a 2 there are the rational number a rational number some rate. So, suppose beta is a point a rational number lying between this then obviously, it will lie between this alpha 1 if it does not lie then it will lie outside of it something. So, suppose beta uh, corresponding to this beta we can identify the rational number b 1 b 2 such that b beta lies with b 1 b 2, but the difference between beta b 2 minus b 1 is less than this okay? means this difference a 2 minus a 1 is less than b, b 2 minus b 1. Here is something b 1 b 2 like this okay? whose difference is less than this difference. Then the consider then the number beta plus a 1 minus b 1 this number is a rational number lying between and will lie and lies between a 1 and a between a 1 and a 2. Why? Suppose, beta is uh, does not lie between a 1 a 2, then I have I can choose the two rational number which can enclose the beta 1 beta 2 uh, sorry beta b 1 b 2. So, construct a number beta plus a 1 minus b 1, but I claim this is a irrational number irrational is obviously true because beta is irrational. So, any number say under root 2 is irrational then 2 plus root 2 will also be irrational. So, this is irrational there no problem, but what he says it lies between a 1 and a 2 why because the beta plus a 1 minus b 1 this number when you write okay. when you write beta plus a 1 minus b 1 this can be written as a 1 plus beta minus b 1, but beta I am assuming lying between b 1 and b 2. So, beta minus b 1 will be positive. So, this entire thing will be greater than a 1, but this is positive. So, any number add positive number added this quantity will be bigger than this. So, we are getting this number will lie uh, will be greater than a 1. Similarly, beta plus a 1 minus b 1. Now, a 1 minus b 1 from here we can write this since we have assumed b 2 minus b 1 is less than a 2 minus a 1 this we have assumed. So, what happen is when you take this side b 2 minus a 2 is less than okay, a 1 minus okay, b 2 minus a 2 is less than minus a 1 plus b 1 is it not or b 1 minus a 1. So, this a 1 minus b 1 is less than a 1 minus b 1 if you transfer here is less than a 2 minus b 2. So, if I take this is strictly less than beta plus a 2 minus b 2 and again this is a 2 plus minus minus times b 2 minus beta, but beta lies between what beta lies between b 1 and b 2. So, b 2 is greater than b beta. So, b 2 minus beta is positive you are subtracting a positive quantity from a 2. So, will it not be less than a 2? So, bit this number lies between a 2 and a 1. So, we have constructed a, if a rational irrational number does not lie between a 1 a 2 then we can rewrite this number in such a way. So, that this new number irrational number will lie between a 1 and a 2. It means between any two real number we can introduce the irrational number and there are infinite in numbers. Okay. So, this is these are the two property which enjoyed 
by this. Okay. Now, <laughs> we have seen that apart from the rational, there are irrational number like under root 2, under root 3, etcetera. But whether this is the only residual number, the question arises. Can we say there are some other residual number, residual number other than these sorts? These are called the sorts. Say irrational numbers under root two, under root three, and so on and so forth. All may be three uh, to the power cube root of three like this. These are all irrational numbers and not only this if I take 2 plus root 2 it will be a rational number or 2 plus 2 plus root 2 and then root 2. This is also a rational number and like this way we can go ahead further. Okay. So, what it says is there are so many rational numbers. Now, if we look these numbers suppose I take root 3 or the number like this suppose 4 plus root 15 cube root of 3 plus cube root of 4 minus root 15. Suppose I take this number. Okay. So, if I take the number we can write it suppose this is x then if I simplify this number then we can say that this comes out to be this is equivalent to x cube equal to 3 x plus 8. x cube is 3 x plus 8. Why? because if you take the x cube then what happen is because x cube means a plus b whole cube is a cube plus b cube plus 3 times a square into b plus 3 times a into b square. Okay. This is hmm? this is the expression for this x cube. Now, this gets cancelled. So, what we get 8 plus 3. Now, this will be equal to what 4 plus root 15 and then a plus b into a minus b a square minus b square. So, 16 minus 15 is 1. So, nothing then the here is plus 3 4 minus root 15. Is it okay? Just I am combining this a plus b a minus b a square minus. So, you are getting this, but again if you take 3 outside 3 outside then what you get is it not the same as x cube plus 3 x uh, this is uh, cube root yes yes. So, what you are getting is a cube plus b now here something mistake I did it what is this expression a plus b cube means a cube 3 will be out b cube 3 will be out then square of this. So, 2 by 3 is it not into 1 third then again 1 third into 2 by 3 is it correct because a square means what it is a cube root power 1 by 3. So, square means 2 by 3 multiply this 1 by 3. So, so, when you take this outside this becomes the what is one third if you take outside one third one third. So, finally, what you are getting is square of this one third and one third. So, one third is outside one third is outside okay? and that now this is x. So, it becomes the 8 uh, plus 3 x is it okay? So, we get this one. No, it is not clear, but this is the formula is a plus b cube is a cube plus b cube plus 3 a square b plus 3 a b square. This is the formula. So, using this formula, this ok. Huh? So, you can get it. Ha, yes, a plus b is x. Yeah, that's also we can do. Clear? So you get it. No, a b here will not be one because if power one by three is there, na. So how can you say it is one? 
you just open it and take here what I, I am doing is 4 plus 1 by uh, power 2 by 3 is there I can write 1 by 3 into 1 by 3 4 plus root 5 a power 1 by 3 multiply by 4 plus root 5 power 1 by 3 and then 1 by 3 1 by 3 combine 4 minus so that becomes 1 so only this term is there similarly this okay so that's one so what it says is this one similarly if we take this number this is say x one can easily write it this x cube equal to 3 now let's see the converse part suppose an expression is given x cube plus 3x plus x and it is asked to find the x if it is a equation algebra equation of degree 1 we can write it algebra equation 2 we can also find the x explicitly even x equal to 3 power is 3 we still we can find the expression like but it is compulsory. but when the power when the algebra equation is having the degree more than 3 in fact more than 3 or 4 5 etc it is very difficult to write the x in the form of the source though theoretically it must set come because it is a solution of the algebraic equation clear so what we conclude is that when we have a general sol algebraic equation with the integral coefficients then the solution of these algebraic equation will give either a rational number or maybe a irrational number so always you find the roots of this algebraic equation will be rational or irrational the sometimes it is possible to find the explicit uh, form of the irrational number depending on the degree of the polynomial is in a polynomial in x if it degree is comfortable we can identify x as in salt if it degree is higher we cannot write but theoretically it should come so what we conclude is that the solution of all algebra equation will always give a real number that is irrational number or rational number both is it clear why rational number? Suppose I take just for uh, x equal to p by q. This is rational point. Is it not a equation? Q x minus p equal to zero. It's not algebraic equation of degree one. So it means the solution of algebraic equation may be rational also. But if we take the equation like x square plus one equal to zero, or x square plus four equal to 0 something like that something then we are getting something irrational points or minus 4 you can say because otherwise I will take the lead a uh, complex. Uh, complex. So, if I get this one then you are getting x equal to plus minus 2, but if I get x square minus 3 equal to 0 you get a irrational point. So, in general we can say that the roots of n the roots of n algebra equation algebra equation of the form of the form a naught x to the power n a 1 x n minus 1 plus a n equal to 0 where a naught a 1 a 2 a n are integers integers are called algebraic number algebraic numbers ok are called the algebraic number and these algebraic numbers are these algebraic numbers are either rational numbers or rational numbers or so basically they are real that is reals the solution of the algebraic equation will give a real number ok is it clear but just by taking the solution of the algebraic equation we are getting a rational number also will it exhaust the entire irrational points mean this is the these are the only 
radiation number which can obtained? The answer is no. It's not only the solution of the algebra equation only can come give the radiation point, and the radiation set of radiation number is complete is not true. There are some other radiation number which are not the solution of an algebra equation. So, others number the numbers which are not the solution which are not the solution of an algebraic number of an algebraic of an equation 1 of an algebraic equation 1 are known as transcendental function transcendental number T r n is transcendental numbers transcendental numbers ok. For example, our pi is a transcendental number is not a solution for any algebraic equation. What is pi is basically the uh, circumference of a unit circle with the if you take a unit circle centered at 0 with a radius a 1, then what is the circumference 2 pi r is it not that if r becomes 1, r becomes 1, uh, one then the diameter of this uh, diameter is 2 pi, 2 pi diameter. So, that diameter 2 pi will give the pi. Okay? So, basically the pi is a uh, transcendental number. Okay? Then there is another one E that also a number. What is the E is a base of base of Napoleon Napoleon Rian L uh, logarithmic logarithm base of the log natural log log with base E. So, this E is a transcendental number is not a then these numbers similarly e to the power x all these numbers all these numbers are irrational number are irrational numbers. In fact, e to the power x tan inverse x e to the tan inverse x log x to the base e etcetera etcetera these are all irrational number irrational numbers for rational values for rational values of x tan inverse x is a irrational number when x is rational e to the power x is irrational when x is rational log of x is irrational like this. So, the set of collection of the irrational number is a very weak set, bigger set and here we can get clear. So, this one. Now, <laughs> there is a uh, in result, the result says is the square root of any the square root of any positive real number any positive real number which is not perfect gives irrational point. Give a rational point. If A is a positive real number, but it is not a perfect, perfect means that A cannot be a square of A is not an uh, say it cannot be expressed as a square of some integers, it is not perfect. Okay? The square root does not come out to be an integer. 
So, if it is not a perfect then its square root must be a rational point. The proof is very simple in case of root 2 we have already shown. Suppose, I take a general one let a real number a let a equal to m by n which is rational point rational number positive rational number which is not perfect not perfect ok it is not perfect, but we want to show that the square root of this will not be a will be a irrational point. So, let let us let square root of this is a rational number suppose p by q where p and q does not have any common factor. common factor. In fact, it is the least. Similarly, m n we assume m n n does not have any common factor. This is also in the least form. So, both are in least form. Okay. Now, let us see under root m by n is p by q. Okay. So, we get from here is m square into q sorry m into q square equal to n into p square let it be 1. Now, when we take this one q square m into q square is n into p square. So, we can say that m divides p square because m cannot divide n because m n all in the lowest form m and n it is given in the lowest form, huh, because m by n is in lowest form they do not have any common factor. So, only possibility the m must have a common factor with p square is it not. So, from here m must have must have common factor with p square. Similarly, so m can be written as lambda times of p square is it not once it is a common factor means it is similarly n has a n must have a common factor with q square. So, n must be equal to lambda into q square is it not, but this lambda m and n are in the lowest form. So, lambda must be 1 because m and n does not have any common factor it is in the lowest form m by n we are assuming in the lowest form this is the lowest form a rational number when you are writing rational number say 1 by 2 or say 3 by 4 it is in the lowest form suppose it is 6 by 8 we do not take it as a 6 by 8 what we do we put it in the lowest form is it not. So, that there is no common factor in it between. So, m by n is a only common factor is 1 that is all. So, at the most a lambda will be 1. So, when lambda is 1 since m by n is in lowest form. So, lambda must be 1 therefore, what does imply therefore, m is equal to p square and n is equal to q square. Okay. What do you mean by this? What do you mean by this? it means m by n is nothing but the p square by q square. So, if I take a square root it comes out to be p by q. It means m must be the square of some number m must be a perfect square n must be a perfect square clear. So, a contradiction. So, a contradiction. So, this shows there implies m and n all perfect squares which leads which is a contradiction. contradiction ok is it ok or not. So, therefore, m by n square root of m by n is irrational ok. okay. Now, suppose we have the 
any number of the real number rational number is perfect square okay positive integer second case is let m be a positive integer positive integer which is not perfect okay we wanted to show that this is it is required to prove is that a square root of m is a rational point okay suppose it's not true suppose hmm. suppose it is not true so let p by q be the number so suppose p by q is a fraction fraction in its lowest form lowest form whose square is m we are assuming this is a rational number and p by q and in the square is this okay now since p by q is a rational number so there are the two point lambda and lambda plus 1 which can encircle this p by q p by q will lie between two integer because any rational number you choose you can always identify the two consecutive integer in between the rational number lies so is it not so we get there exists so suppose that so suppose lambda and lambda plus 1 are the two integers are the two integers uh, between which between which p by q lies p by q lies it means lambda so what we get is p by q lie okay so lambda lambda plus 1 so we get from here is so we get lambda is less than p by q less than lambda plus 1 this implies that q into lambda into q is less than p less than lambda plus 1 p. let it be 2 okay also p by q is equal to what under root m so this shows that p square minus m q square is 0 like 3 if with the help of this if we write this equation identity consider the identity this just you verify okay m q minus lambda p square minus m p minus lambda q square you will see the value of this will come out to be the lambda square minus m or we can rewrite this expression into this form which is 0. This expression m q minus lambda p whole square minus m times p minus lambda q whole square I just open it and open it in rearrange in this form then you are getting this expression, but lambda square is m lambda square is m because this is uh, uh, p square sorry p square minus m q square is 0. So, this part is 0 means total thing is 0. So, total thing is 0 means this is also 0. So, from here we can write m h m h m q minus lambda p whole square divided by p minus lambda q whole square is it not? p minus lambda q all is equal m. So, what you are getting is the m this is also uh, a uh, number, but what is the denominator? Uh, yes, I think is uh, m here. Yeah. The denominator is p minus lambda q, while the m earlier was this p by q I think you have something uh, lambda p m q minus lambda q is another fraction. So, denominator of this fraction is less than q. Why less than q? This will be 
yes. So, when you write here p minus lambda, lambda is what p minus here pe, it, this will come from here yeah you take it this one p minus lambda q is positive okay p minus lambda q is positive it means this whole thing is less than p this is whole thing is less than p because p minus lambda q is less than p similarly here we can say so we are getting a <coughs> m into another form rational where the denominator changes denominator changes to a lower form but m is in the lowest form so it is contradiction okay so this leads there okay i think this i will continue next time okay thank you okay. clear this is